So today we will be answering the module number two of Mathematics 7. So our topic is all about um, the problems involving sets. So when you say problems, we're talking about a situational um, problem wherein we will be solving what is being um, um, challenged us to do so. So to begin with, we have the set of objectives to follow. First, we have to solve the problems involving sets using a Venn diagram. Second, apply this set operations to solve variety of word problems. And the last and the third one, and that's, that's the only two. So let's begin with um, defining what is a Venn diagram. So if we would like to represent uh, diagrammatically a set, then it is called to be a Venn diagram. At the same time, this method is consists primarily of entering the elements of a set into a circle of circles. Like what I uh, created a video last meeting, we had we were able to make Venn diagram of union of sets, intersection of sets, um, the difference of two sets, and a complement of a set. So it can also be used to solve word problems involving union and intersection of sets. So, so these are the steps that we will be following in order for us to identify or to solve the word problems using involving sets. So the first is um, step one, determine what is given and what is being asked. So in step one, there are two things to identify, the given and what is asked. Step two, illustrate using the Venn diagram. So we will uh, illustrate the set in a Venn diagram manner. Next, determine what operations to be used, if it is union or intersection. Lastly, use the operations and answer the question being asked. So, let's proceed. So, example number one. So, let A and B be two finite sets such that the cardinality of set A is 20 and the cardinality of set B is 28. Now, when I say cardinality, we're talking about the number of elements found in set A and set B. Therefore, set A has 20 elements, set B has 28 elements. And, moreover, if we are going to unite A union B, it is said that it has 36 elements. Find A intersection B. Now, in this case, we're looking for the A intersection B. So, let's proceed now to answering that one. So, step one would tell us what is the given. So, what are the given, rather? So, we have... The first given is this one, and this one second, and last is the, this. So we have the cardinality of set A which is equal to 20, the cardinality of set B which is equal to 28, and the cardinality of A union B is equal to 36. Now, we are going to find what is being asked. So going back to the problem what is being asked is find so therefore a intersection b so we have a intersection b this is what is being asked now let's proceed now to step number two so for step number two we will be um Illustrating using a Venn diagram, so we have um, A, this is step 2, so we have a Venn diagram here, then the two sets, the circle of circles, this is A, this is our set B, and this is our universal set. Now, what, where is the A intersection B? A un, uh, intersection B. So when you say intersection, the common parts. So A intersection B. So we have the common parts here. So therefore, this is now our A intersection B. Next, step number three. We are going to determine what operations to be used. So we are now identifying the operations. So, um, when you say union, um, it should be, the formula in creating a union of sets is like this. N, A, union B is equal to, the first, add the first set, then add the second set, then subtract the intersection of this set. 
Now, how do we know if it, the formula is like that? So, um, the formula is always like this if we are trying to identify the union of sets. Now, since we are looking for the intersection, this one, I'm sorry for that, this is intersection. Since we are looking for the intersection of sets, then we will be identifying this. So this is our given, given, given. Now take note, equals is put on this side. Therefore, if we are going to transfer this one to the other side of the equation from negative, it will turn to positive. Therefore, we have N A intersection B is equal to the cardinality of set A plus the cardinality of set B. Now take note, this one is a positive. So from uh, if you're going to transfer this one using the additive inverse from this section to the other section of the equation, it will turn to negative. So we have N intersection uh, A union B. So we have now the given. This is now our given. So going back, N A is equal to 20 plus N B we have 28 and the cardinality of A union B is 36. Now if we are going to simplify this further, a intersection B A intersection B right, Simplify this further 20 plus 28 that is 48 Then minus 36 48 minus 36 And algebraically that is 12 So that is now our The number of sets can be found In A intersection B Now we will now use The operations To use the operations still we will be doing the Uh uh, Venn diagram. So step number four. So draw a diagram. So this is our set A. This is our set B. And this is our universal set. Now, take note if this is, if the intersection is 12, so 12 minus, uh, how many elements are there in A? So we have 20 as it is in uh, given at least at least is presented as a given so set a has 20 minus 12 we have now 8 so 12 uh, set b has 36 elements minus 12 that is 16 so that is now our uh, step number four step number five answer the questions being asked so going back what is being asked so we are going to identify the intersection of A and B. So step number five. So step number five would tell us that the cardinality of A intersection B is equal to 12. Now take note, do not forget to write the word therefore, therefore symbol. Therefore, the cardinality of A intersection B is equal to 12. Okay, next, let's proceed now to example number two. In a junior high school, there are 200 students uh, were randomly selected. 140 like tea, 120 like coffee, and 80 like both tea and coffee. Again, in a junior high school students, um, there were randomly selected students. Um, 140 like the tea, 120 like the coffee, and 80 like both tea and coffee. So, the question is... I'm sorry. So how many students like T on D? How do we determine that one? How many students like coffee on D? Or neither the T of the or coffee. So step one. Um we are going to determine what is the given and what are being asked. So so again we have two hundred students. Randomly selected, 150 of those like tea, 120 of those like coffee, and 80 students who like both tea and coffee. So in our given, we will put step number one. So we have 200 as our junior students who were 
randomly selected. We have 140 students who liked tea. And 120 students who liked coffee. And the last one is 80 students who, who both liked coffee and tea. coffee and tea so this is now our uh, four given from based on the problem so what is ask or what are we going to find you may use the word find or ask so there are three things we're going to look for how many or the number of students like tea the number of students who liked who liked tea next letter b the number of students who like coffee who like coffee i do not forget the word only only next both who like neither tea or coffee Students who liked neither tea nor coffee. So in this case, if the given is, uh, if what is asked is a question, so some something like this, uh, this is a this is a question, right? So. We are not going to copy this one. Instead, we are going to translate this one into from, from imperative to declarative form of statement. In other words, if it is a question, then we will translate this one into a imperative or a, per, or a sentence. So, um, I believe uh, in, in this uh, idea that uh, the given or what is asked should not be a question. Because the question itself is what is asked then you will be answered it by a question so therefore we must translate this one into a declarative sentence so like what i did so this is what i like i did so the, the, the first one was question but i translated this one into a sentence so we are going to illustrate that one using a venn diagram so let's proceed now to step number two so step two using a venn diagram so since we don't know yet uh, the set of students who like tea we don't know yet the set of students who like coffee and the set of students who like neither tea or coffee then we can use a representation representation um uh, you use representation if you don't know um the answer to that or if you don't know those sets so let we let t as the set be the set of students who like only t like t only so why set t because t is started with letter t next what about c let me let c be the set of students who like this past tense who like coffee only so um neither tea or coffee we can use set set x let x be the set of students who like coffee ah neither coffee neither coffee or tea now can i use different letter for this x yes you may use y z etc etc as long as it is not being repeated so by venn diagram so by venn diagram we could say now that uh, 
this is our universal set this is our tea this is our coffee and um, do we know how many uh, how many chooses um, both tea and coffee okay can kindly go back on the given again do we know who, who the number of elements who chooses both tea and coffee yes we know and that is 80 so 80 like both tea and coffee so we we may write this one here that is 80 next step number three we are going to determine what operations to be used so to obtain the first uh, set t we could use um we all know that there are uh, how many students um, preferred to who like tea alone so if we, we know that it is 80 choices um, both tea and coffee we could subtract 140 by 80 so to obtain tea part 1 part 1 of step number 3 so we are now on part, part 1 step number 3 so tea who chooses tea alone so we all know that um, 140 we all know that 140 liked the tea alone and we also know that um, the intersection of tea and coffee is 80 so therefore we could subtract 140 minus 80 so 140 minus 80 and that is that will give us 60 as our set of students who like tea next part 2 To obtain C, coffee alone, we go back to the given. How many students who love coffee? So there are 